Welcome back to a different part of the set. Our first guest is a close personal friend of mine and one handsome gentleman. Fresh off his Battle Studies tour, please bring your hands together for my musical soulmate, John Mayer. What's up, John? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you, too. So first of all, everyone's talking about it this week. You, oh my god, you deleted your Twitter account. Yeah, yeah. Is, is Twitter dead to you? What's going on? Uh, no, I mean, I, I was thinking about how I would answer that without sounding like I was criticizing anyone else for having it. or you, I don't want to make any broad statements about society. I just didn't want to do it anymore. That's just, just didn't want to do it anymore. So now how are you going to like overshare information and turn people on to new music and, <laughs> and keep in touch with the general populace? Uh, I think I'm just going to keep in touch with my specific populace, like my family and my friends, and, and go back to sort of phone call. The stage one of getting my life back together is getting rid of Twitter. Stage two is probably um, getting to the Verizon flip phone. I just want the, the clamshell phone. Right, <laughs> the old school I'm going to go back to the phone and eventually do away with text because I feel like if you make somebody have to call you, most people will never call you. True. Right. Somebody's only going to call you when they really need to get a hold of you, right? So the idea of like these texts that I get like four in the morning from people who are just being really selfish, you know, like these I'm, four. I'm sorry about that, yeah. dude. I, I just assume you're <laughs> well, you, up playing Halo. You, you don't have this problem anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember back at the beginning of the year, you were talking about doing a digital cleanse, right? Yes. And what were the rules of the digital cleanse? Well, this is sort of where I'm heading to full time now. The rule was you can own, no Twitter, no texting. Mm -hmm. You can check email from uh, a laptop. Okay. But you have to, uh, oh, and you can read emails, and you can read texts, but you have to return with a phone call. That's what it was. Man. And then you start realizing people stop communicating with you once you hold them to making a phone call, which is beautiful, because then you just sort of go quiet, and then uh, within a couple days, I started having, like, just slightly larger, better ideas. I re realized when you're always on Twitter, you're going like, is this anything? Yeah. Is this anything? Is this Twitterable? Is this <laughs> is this, and then you start doing anything, like, I'm playing Halo right now. Is this anything? Well, you're really, honestly, and maybe you feel the same way, like when you tweet something, you're really kind of trying, like you might make a joke, but then you're also thinking, I got to pan down to like the lowest common denominator because if you say something weird, you're going to get a thousand people saying like, oh, I can't believe you didn't like Hoboken. That's what the hell's wrong? And, and like, <laughs> for me, I want to like really delineate when I'm somebody that people know and when I'm just me at home. And I found that what Twitter was starting to do, and again, I'm not knocking it for anybody else because I don't want to make the press of like, Mayor slams Twitter. But <laughs> you hate for Twitter. For, I, for me, You hate the I, people I that run Twitter? <laughs> you hate the people that use Twitter? I, I won't use any of the letters in any word that are in Twitter. <laughs> uh, I just don't want to open that portal at home. I'll be on the couch at home, private time, me. Right. And then you just sort of open up the portal to four million people and what they have to say about stuff. You know, well, I could give that a break for a minute. So uh, Battle Studies has been out for a while now. It yeah. actually just went platinum, which yeah. in today's market is actually diamond. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you think about it. I know. And um, reading a lot of the reviews and the press online, a lot of people are saying that every single song was written for or about me. That's true. Is that true? <laughs> That's true. You broke my heart. I know. And then the line where you said, um, if you want more love, why don't you say so? Yeah. That's why I was texting you at 4 o'clock in the morning trying to get across, <laughs> dude. You up. Yeah, you up. You always cool. me. You up. <laughs> I love it. You awake? Where are you at? I'm getting texted at 5 in the morning. You awake. <laughs> no. Except, yes, I am awake. But why would you think that? Um, you recorded in Capitol Records in yes. the basement. Why did you um, decide to record there? Well, we had made a lot of the record in, uh, in this house that I had rented out, and then realized that I really need to get into a studio to just do the guitar overdubs and just play loud and a room mm -hmm. that's really set up for it. You actually visited I did. one night, which is one of my favorite battle study stories. One of the, I think <laughs> it's in the top five stories of making the record. Mark and some friends come and visit, and, uh, and you were in party mode, can we say? Yes, we were in party mode. You were in party mode. Yeah. And Mark is sort of like using the wall for assistance. <laughs> he's sort of hanging out, right? right? And, uh, and there's a bowl of fruit next to you. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, yo, dude. Mind if I help myself to a banana? <laughs> and I said, what? He goes, mind, mind if I help myself to a banana? <laughs> and what he was saying is, while in party mode, 
do you mind if I help myself to a banana? Yeah. But which came out, do you mind if I help myself to a banana? <laughs> <laughs> Even when in party mode, yeah. is, is really conscious of your fruit inventory. That's true. <laughs> That's, honestly, I've been eyeing that banana for so long, and it took me so much courage, because like you guys were recording, and yeah. you had a bunch of engineers and professionals in the studio setting things up and stuff, and they're running tracks back, and the whole time I just look at that banana like, <laughs> I really, really want God, that banana. I, my, my, I want to help myself to a banana. <laughs> when you know that somebody knows exactly who you are, yeah. do you still go through this thing where like, you have to go, hi, I'm John? It's funny, I, 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 I ran into to Jay-Z a couple of weeks ago, and I, I introduced him to a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. He was like, hi, I'm Jay, and he, Jay immediately said, hey, can you, should I be telling, <laughs> Jay-Z says, should I introduce myself as Jay, or do people know? <laughs> he actually said, he actually said, this is how great a guy the guy actually is. He goes, hey, should I introduce myself as Jay, or do people know? Is that weird when I say that? <laughs> and I said, no, man, keep doing it, because it's polite. Yeah. And, and even, if, even if other people go, I know, you know what you say? Well, well it's polite. Yeah, it's And they right. go, oh, yeah, yeah, it's polite. They're sort of looking for you to figure out what their cue is. If you go, we're cool, baby, they go, OK, we're cool. Yeah, you know and it's kind mean? of dick to walk around and just be like, yeah, you know who I am. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know who I, mean? I am. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we had a bunch of people outside that wanted to ask you relationship advice questions. Is that something that you're open to? Of course. All right. Well, <laughs> absolutely. Learn from the best. All right. Let's uh, roll the questions. What do women really want? Because I'm tired of trying to figure it out. Ooh, what do women want? First of all, that's a good looking guy. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, here's how my brain works. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to take a ride. So the idea that. Um, you wouldn't want to go up and talk to somebody because, you know, they probably don't want to be bothered. We all want to be bothered. So for me, I'm always like, wow, people don't, don't even want to mess with me at all anymore. And then you find out that, like, maybe I'm not that much of a liability if people just want to have fun. All right, let's roll the second question. Hi, John. Um, I had a drunken hookup with someone I really want to start dating. How do I make the transition? <laughs> so... Well, wow. The, well, okay. Oh, well, first of all, wow. Yeah. <laughs> second, yeah. Second of all, so she hooked up with a dude on the first date, and right. she wants to backtrack from that general sluttiness. Right. And build it into something more real. The question here, first off, was, is, was he drunk as well? Because if he was drunk as well, I would imagine that you have a little bit of wiggle room there. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. If he wasn't drunk as well, number one, he's a sleaze bag. Because <laughs> I drink as much as my woman. Right. I think it's a rule. Gentlemen should always drink as much as the woman he's on a date with. Never more, but never less. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's going to be awkward on the second date, though, because it's going to get to the end of the date. And if she's trying to build it more into a relationship, you can't really do that wait till the third date thing. Because right. he can be like, yo, you gave it up on date you one. You can't. Uh, I think if you've done, if you're, if you're doing what she says she's done and you're even going on a second date, you're good. Right. If you'd ever get the phone call back, you were just sort of, you, you had a once over. Yeah. You know what I mean? You didn't well, get the complete undercarriage wax or the, <laughs> or the, uh, the you know. The true coat? You didn't get the true coat. <laughs> Question three. Hi, John. I was wondering, do you date fans? <laughs> well, I've thought about this. I would rather date a, f I would like to date a casual fan. I'd like to have casual sex with a casual fan. <laughs> <laughs> not casual sex with a super fan. Right. And, and not super sex with a super. And not super su sex with someone who's, who I'm not their thing. I don't, I don't want, I, I, I don't want to have sex with my girlfriend while she has to listen to the Arcade Fire CD. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I would be in a, in a little bit of a pickle there. Like, so I want someone who's like, um, can we say in, like an out, like uh, in her shared playlist, on iTunes, right? When I do hack into her computer, I want to <laughs> see. I want to see that she has four songs and a couple live tracks. Oh, cool! Isn't that what you want? Yeah. Wouldn't you like? Well, in your in your other days, you would have wanted to. Oh, I hacked into my wife's computer, and she better have some blink on that's that. Right. Shit. That's right. For sure. Blink. You are a charming, charming man. Well, thank you. We've always known this. It's true, and I, I think it's. Great that you know mainstream media is finally picking up on the fact that I'm really marketable. I mean, you are. <laughs> look at this thing I'm here. I'm very, very charming, and you have you have one of the best cribs I've ever seen. Oh, thank you very much. A very sort of domestic, a domestic bliss sort of a cribs. Thanks. Yeah, you it's, know, it's, I want to live like that. You could, dude, we have an extra bedroom. If you can, <laughs> seriously, if you can babysit maybe three or four days a week, you're definitely welcome in our home. You, you want you want to trust me? You want to trust me to the child? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So what's evolving. next? What what happens now? Um. I'm just gonna go sort of chill out, get my head back, um, 
listen to a lot more music, play a lot more music. I, I sort of have this feeling that the music I've already made so far is not going to be the music that's going to define my life. And I feel like you could, look at, you could look at your career two ways, like, okay, I've made it, so cool, let's just keep going, or that's nothing. And so I'm going to look at it like that's just the start of the stuff that I'm, I'm going to start playing and writing that I'll be known for for the rest of my life. I have to look at it like that. You know? Awesome. So is this like the last interview that you're going to do before you go on this opus? This is the first interview I've done in eight months. So, <laughs> and, ah, and, ah, <laughs> suck it, CNN, <laughs> suck it. <laughs> it the first, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm doing this for you because you're a great friend, and, and, and my entire life I've been really successful and lucky because I've, I've just done, done stuff with friends and for friends, and I don't look at, like, you know, the Q rating or look at, like, what network and when's it going to be on. I go, like, he's a cool dude. And, and I really like him, and, and I'll do anything for that guy. So yeah, and that's how I've been really successful. That's how you've been successful. You go, True. Yeah, cool. Let's get together and play. You go, yeah, let's go on tour. That's what and it's all about. Really yeah, you know what I mean. So, so awesome. Um, well, thank you so much. Thank and you, give man. it up for John Mayer. We'll be right back with a panel of much less famous and important people right after this. Thanks, man. I really appreciate thank it. You. Awesome.